Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and here is your detailed forecast update for April 14th, 2025. A lot to get through today, plenty of rain and thunderstorms over in the western half of Australia. We've got plenty of rain and thunderstorms developing into the southwest corner of Western Australia as well, and a tropical cyclone now beginning to form up in the Kimberley region or offshore from the Kimberley region into the southern parts of the Timor Sea. This system here is expected to attain tropical cyclone status sometime in the next 36 hours, and it's going to be quick to intensify and even quicker to die off after it has intensified. It's going to be a strange system but a fun one to track it's going to keep us on our toes this will be what becomes tropical cyclone errol here developing quite nicely now towards the northwest of wa uh, plenty of rain and thunderstorms have wrapping around this storm here and we ha have had some heavy falls streaming into the kimberley coastline the system is wrapping itself up as i have said for probably the 10th time already this forecast update but taking a look at its future you can see that the models are calling for this system to be pretty quick to develop uh, once it does get itself going and it's going to get itself going once it gets itself a little bit further offshore from the kimberley coastline so whilst we're not expecting a full-blown tropical cyclone today or even tomorrow into tomorrow afternoon is when we're actually expecting this system to become a tropical cyclone here offshore from WA. Once it does get itself up to tropical cyclone status, it'll be very quick to intensify and you can see major forecast models bring this up to a significant tropical cyclone status through Tuesday night, Wednesday and into early Thursday morning. By Thursday morning, it's going to begin to make a U-turn towards the southeast and that's when we are expecting some weakening to kick in. It will be slow to start at first on Thursday morning, but it will really pick up in pace through Thursday. Thursday afternoon and into Thursday evening, dragged down by a cold front, and as such, we are expecting this system to be battered by wind shear through Thursday night and into Friday morning, and it'll likely drop below tropical cyclone status as quick as it attained it through Friday and into towards Saturday as it approaches the Kimberley coastline. Forecast models are now becoming a little bit more on board with the fact that this system, if it does make a landfall, it's going to be a very slow moving system, and it will actually be turning away from the West Australian coastline as it approaches a landfall, and it's now very likely to happen in the Kimberley region along the Kimberley coastline, so Broome, Derby, Curry Bay, those sort of areas and now I guess you could say in the firing line for a potential landfall probably sometime around Easter Saturday or Sunday the 19th or 20th of April respectively but at this point this system really isn't worth much of a concern and it, the only major threat from this system here is we're talking about a rainfall threat and that's kind of it. Through Easter Monday and Tuesday we're expecting the system to head out offshore from West Australia once again out towards Raleigh Shoals and then into WA waters where it is expected to have its remnant energy dispersed as tropical moisture moves from the east over towards the west. This system here is going to have an interesting life but a very short life indeed we're expecting it to only hold tropical cyclone status for a couple of days probably about four or five days before it weakens as quickly as it intensifies in terms of potential impacts on the west australian coastline like i said the system turning for wa around sort of thursday afternoon thursday evening time and then it's going to have a two-day approach a two-day run up towards landfall which is likely to happen sometime late saturday night or into early sunday morning and the most likely location for it is somewhere between broom up to about uh Curry bay or the mitchell plateau there are some discrepancies between major forecast modeling in terms of where the landfall could potentially be. You can see the GFS actually takes this system uh, further away from the coastline and recurves it sort of around the Raleigh Shoal sort of area. The closer it gets to the coastline, the weaker it is going to be because it is going to be battered by wind shear as well. Once it gets itself down there, uh, significant rainfall is a threat from this system, but it's not really a major threat at this point in time. And you can see as per the forecast modeling, rainfall accumulations aren't actually expected to be that heavy over the next week or so across the Kimberley region or just across northwest west Australia in general, even though this system is going to be slow moving and at some point in time it is expected to be a rather intense tropical cyclone. It could be up around that category 3 and we're not writing off category 4 status at this point in time because this system is going to be small and it does have a very favourable environment ahead of it at least until about Thursday afternoon. So in terms of rainfall numbers across the Kimberley coastline you can see falls between 25 out to about 50 millimetres expected around the Columba Roo area on top of what has already fallen so a further 50 millimetres on top of 150 millimetres will bring week long rain rainfall accumulation somewhere between 200 out to 250 millimetres for Columbaroo. That's some good rainfall, especially for this time of the year. Certainly very welcome, that's for sure. Heavier falls can be expected around Derby down towards Broome. We could be seeing anywhere between 50 out to about 150 millimetres for those locations. And if this system does make a direct crossing of the coastline sometime around Saturday or Sunday, we could be seeing rainfall accumulations up to 300 millimetres of, uh, in total around where the system does make landfall because it will be that slow moving system before it recurves once again later on into the forecast period period. Falls up to 100 millimetres are possible around Fitzroy Crossing and falls up to 50 millimetres are possible for Kununurra, Wyndham and Halls Creek as the system moves away from the WA coastline and away from those areas. Peak rainfall accumulations where the storm is expected to stall at uh, just to the north of Ra uh, Raleigh Shoals of course over the ocean are up around that 5 to 600 millimetre mark so it does go to show that this system is going to pack a punch in terms of rainfall but once it loses all of its convection ripped uh, apart by wind shear basically down towards the West Australian coastline it is going to struggle substantially to uh, 
uh, produce those significant rainfall accumulations. And that's why we're not expecting huge numbers as a result of this tropical cyclone for a wide swathe of locations. Normally, a system forecast like this could flare up all sorts of alarm bells for West Australia. But I think we are just in that later parts of the season right now, where if a strong tropical cyclone does get itself going, it has a lot of factors ahead of it uh, that are playing into this system. And right now, it is frankly a struggling tropical cyclone in the making. It does have some strong winds coming out of the northwest and the west, uh, out of the east rather than the northeast and the east. You can see ships through here reporting winds between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour. Uh, gusts will likely be substantially stronger than that. Adele Island up around that 40 kilometer an hour mark right now, 37 kilometers an hour. This system here is strengthening and does have any gale force winds, but it isn't anywhere near to tropical cyclone status at this point in time. It needs to organize itself substantially more. Throughout the course of this week as well, a potential second tropical cyclone could develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria. The Bureau of Meteorology now highlighting a high chance of development here sometime in the next seven days. We've got the remnants of a tropical wave that's moving through now developing into a bit of a low pressure system and you can see if we play through a six hour satellite loop here, we do have a little bit of rotation now beginning to develop on the lower level cloud patterns here and this system is certainly now beginning to show signs of organisation and getting its act together. Plenty of convection thunderstorms and shower activity have also been apparent over the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory. Good thunderstorms moving through last night through the Darwin area. They got a very healthy light and it definitely looks like some rotation is now really beginning to develop where this convection is located. So this is good news of this tropical low. It's certainly probably doing better now than tropical low 29U, which is going to become tropical cyclone Errol. And this system at this point in time does have a reasonably good shot at becoming a tropical cyclone. It likely won't be, beat what will become tropical cyclone Errol to tropical cyclone status, which is likely to happen sometime tomorrow night. But this system here certainly does have a potentially bright future ahead of it. You can see organization expected to continue through Tuesday and in towards Wednesday before a much tighter low pressure system will develop through Wednesday night and into Thursday. This system here moving into the Gulf of Carpentaria through Thursday and into Friday and really wrapping itself up quite nicely through Thursday night and into Friday morning. And this system, if it is going to become a tropical cyclone, it will happen, but sometime between Wednesday night and into Friday morning. It'll be even briefer than the system over in the WA waters. This system here not likely to kick around for more than about 24 or 36 hours before wind shear gets the better of it and dry air also intrudes into this system and it loses all of its convection through Friday and in towards Saturday. It is a rather hostile environment now in the Gulf of Carpentaria at this time of the year. Wind shear and dry air always a problem for storms in those areas, which is why we can get some beautiful storms there when the conditions are just right. But at this point in time, they are not just right. And the system is going to be fighting an uphill battle. Through Friday and in towards Saturday, it looks like it will make an approach to the Cape York Peninsula before recurving back out through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday next week. And then it's remnant energy getting dispersed into the Timor Sea and then moving out into West Australian waters in the Indian Ocean by around the 25th of April. This system, whilst it doesn't look like it has a bright future ahead of it, it certainly could become a tropical cyclone, the first cyclone of the season in the uh, Northern Territory region and in the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. It's highly unusual that they've been so inactive this uh, tropical cyclone season, especially considering the conditions there have been very favourable, that's for sure. This will have some ramifications of the weather scene up in far north Queensland. So let's talk about that right now. Pulling the forecast models back towards today, you can see some heavier showers moving through north of Lockhart River at this point in time, and they are expecting healthy falls throughout the remainder of today. We also have a band of showers now streaming up from the Whitsundays, pretty much down from southeastern Queensland adjacent to the coastline, which is going to bring itself ashore through the Cassidy Coast throughout the remainder of today. And this isn't being picked up by the forecast modeling at this point in time, but I'm expecting a line of showers to be moving through throughout the remainder of today, picking up later on tonight and into early tomorrow morning and then once again picking up again tomorrow night by the looks of things and some heavier showers can be expected around the Innisfail, the Tully sort of area uh, throughout the next couple of hours and the next couple of days as these showers do move up from the southeast. Now we know this type of weather it happens time and time again up in far north Queensland and as such we can't be ruling out some heavy rainfall accumulations up there of course I'm not talking about crazy falls up above 200 millimetres but I would not be surprised if we saw uh, two day rainfall accumulations between 50 to 150 millimetres for a wide swathe of locations along the Cassidy Coast, Belendon Kerr, Innisfail and down towards Tully are the ones that scream alarm bells for me. And whilst that rainfall is not enough to cause flooding, it will likely uh, result in some relatively big puddles lying around here and there. So again, make sure you are uh, ready and have it in the back of your head that we do have some rather unpleasant weather coming through for the Cassidy Coast. And I imagine a lot of people can attest to this, the weather is actually behaving quite unpleasant up there. Some stronger winds coming out of the southeast and some showers moving through. This is not the dry season weather that people are looking forward to, that is for sure. 
Anyways, later on into the forecast period, we do get that little bit of a lull in the weather scene throughout Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, into the run up to the long weekend. So that's some good news indeed. You might be able to get some beach weather out or some, or maybe not beach weather up in far north Queensland, considering the crocodile situation, but you might be able to get out and enjoy a bit of sunshine through Good Friday and in towards Easter Saturday before the rainfall and the showers pipe up again from the north throughout Saturday night and into early Sunday morning. It actually looks like it will be a pretty wet morning, uh, all things considered, through Easter Sunday, uh, the 20th of April, and then it looks like things will calm down a little bit as we get out towards the 22nd or the 23rd of April. And then reasonably speaking, there's nothing on the longer range forecast throughout the 22nd right out to about the 28th or the 29th of April. A bit of rainfall could return much later on into the forecast period, and that has been on the forecast modelling for the last couple of days, reasonably speaking. But again, it is still a little bit too early to tell. It is also just a little bit too early to tell exactly what rainfall will be coming through at exactly what times and exactly in what places for far north Queensland for Easter. Uh, it, it does look like at this point in time it could be a little bit wet up into the danger of rainforest but it is still a, just a little bit too early to tell there will be some in the vicinity of uh, far north Queensland but again at this point like I've said it is just a little bit too early to tell at this point in time rainfall accumulations aren't anything special as well over the next 14 days we do have some heavier falls expected around the danger rainforest as opposed to the Cassiope coast but the falls that we could be seeing throughout showers over the next couple of hours they're much heavier than what the forecast models do often suggest so I would not be surprised if we saw a one thrown in front of some of these numbers here so if you're looking at 40 or 50 millimetres at Innisfail, up to 150 millimetres could be on the cards over the next couple of days. Up to 150 millimetres is possible in the Daintree rainforest as well, especially from showers coming through, like I said, into that Easter period. Would not be surprised if they picked up some heavier falls up there. Typically speaking, at this time of the year, the Daintree does normally eclipse far north Queensland's Cassidy Coast in terms of rainfall. Heavier falls are expected to be much further up the Cape York Peninsula, though up around Lockhart River and then up towards the Torres Strait Islands and through Thursday Island, where falls up to about two or 300 millimetres are not being ruled out over the next couple of days. Some heavy falls can be expected if we do see tropical low activity developing up there. It'll be interesting to see how the weather plays out for the Cape York Peninsula and far north Queensland. Certainly some interesting stuff on the forecast, that's for sure. 14 day rainfall accumulations don't bring out any more alarm bells for Queensland. We're done with the showers and the storms across the southeast and the northeast of New South Wales, but the southeast of New South Wales and the central coast of New South Wales could really be picking up some healthy rainfall in the next 14 days. With major forecast model the East we have now calling for rainfall accumulations between 100 to 200 millimetres on the cards. I would just like to preface this by saying that it is not reciprocated in a significant manner between other major forecast models. The GFS is saying something pretty much completely different and the Axis hasn't quite got the forecast range out to uncover some of the rainfall but there could be an East Coast low developing in the Tasman Sea much later on into the forecast period that is going to have some significant impacts for New South Wales and parts of Victoria. It'll be interesting to see if this does happen so stick around uh, for the next couple of minutes and I'll break down the forecast for you in great detail. We do have now low pressure beginning to develop over in the uh, Coral Sea and this is now swinging down into the Tasman Sea in places and this is expected to create a very strong low pressure system and I'll show you what I talk about throughout the remainder of today as this low pressure system gets itself down into the Tasman Sea moving over Norfolk Island then down towards the latitude of Nor uh, uh, Lord Howe Island through Wednesday and into Thursday. This system is going to intensify dramatically offshore from New Zealand and it's going to undergo a process called bomb cyclogenesis which sounds like a pretty scary term a bomb cyclone but it's where a system intensifies and drops pressure very rapidly it's like a rapidly intensifying tropical cyclone in the tropics but this system here a fully extra tropical system and it is going to intensify very quickly and become a powerful system that's for sure moving down towards the southwest in the Tasman Sea really having some pretty significant impacts for New Zealand's North Island through Thursday and Friday and then through Friday and into Saturday and Sunday for the South Island some heavy rainfall damaging winds and snow can be expected across some of the higher peaks and so plenty of rainfall to go around down there but you might have been able to notice that for New South Wales and Victoria the impacts were very minor indeed we could be seeing a couple of showers coming out of the south through Thursday and in towards Friday and some rather unpleasant weather it's also like to be likely to be quite chilly across parts of Victoria and New South Wales as a result of the winds that this system is going to whip up from the south it will feel quite polar that's for sure but at this point in time still a little bit too early to tell exactly what the impacts are going to be for much later on into the forecast period but one thing's for sure that that system is not likely to have major ramifications for New South Wales weather beyond a couple of showers, some cooler temperatures and some stronger wind gusts. After Easter though, it looks like between the 22nd and the 27th of April, we might be seeing a strong low pressure system develop into the Tasman Sea again or into the southern uh, parts of the Coral Sea. And as such, this low pressure system could drive some heavy rainfall ashore much later on into the forecast period. And I'm saying could here very loosely because we're not 100% sure at this point in time what we can expect. And between major forecast models, like I have said, there are some major discrepancies. We will likely see some low pressure activity to bring some rainfall 
people to Victoria and Tasmania later on after Easter. And that could also include southeastern New South Wales, some significant falls up to 100 millimetres possible down there. But at this point, it is too early to tell. And this is more of a heads up of what could be going on much later on into the forecast period, as opposed to this is what we expect as a forecasting unit. Anyways, let's head out of New South Wales and Victoria at this point in time. Unfortunately, there's nothing to talk about for rainfall for South Australia and Victoria and also for Tasmania. Nothing really significant down there in terms of the rainfall forecast for the next 14 days. Um, and again, it looks like drought conditions are going to continue for South Australia and Victoria for at least the next week and a half or so. Rainfall will pipe up, of course, later on in towards April and into early May. We'll, we'll likely see an increase of showers down there, but that's just coinciding with the start of winter. So again, the rainfall that they do desperately need to break the drought and really kickstart a good cropping season down there. It doesn't look like it's going to come, not at least for the next two weeks. And with every passing day, the chances of good rainfall to really tip the scales in for a favourable farming season are dropping considerably quickly. Down into the southwest of Western Australia, healthy rainfall accumulations over the last couple of hours. You can see moving through into the wheat belt and into the gold fields now. A nice front moving through, plenty of convection, plenty of rainfall, and some isolated storms moving through those areas right now. Showers and storms trailing this front as well. We have had have had some widespread falls across the southwest of Western Australia. A lot of falls between 5 and 10 millimetres across the Perth metro area. I was lucky enough to pick up 26 millimetres overnight and a very quickly at deluge at about 10 o'clock. Uh, very healthy indeed. Beautiful rainfall in Perth and we did desperately need it. So again, very grateful for the 26 millimetres. And again, a lot of places have missed out on the rainfall, but it's great to see that southern locations into the wheat belt and even out into the gold fields are picking up some very healthy and some much needed rainfall accumulations. A couple of showers could still linger across the southwest capes and the south coast for, uh, throughout the remainder of today, but for the most part, rainfall accumulations are going to be a lot lighter throughout the next 14 days as opposed to what they have been for the last 14. Rainfall accumulations actually, reasonably speaking, expected to be non-existent beyond about uh, today and out towards Tuesday. You can see rainfall accumulations really dropping off later on into the forecast period, uh, which is good. It's typical for this time of the year to have a couple of days of wet, uh, driven by low pressure and more tropical weather as we have seen over the last couple of weeks before a return to the dry conditions, and that is exactly what we're expecting. Winter doesn't normally pipe up for the southwest of Western Australia until at least late May or very early June, so I'm not expecting anything in the way of significant cold fronts for at least another month or so, unfortunately for Western Australia, because we're desperate for this rainfall, that's for sure. So more rainfall would be very, very welcome indeed. Anyways, on that note, I'm going to leave this forecast update here. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Again, all the support lately has been much appreciated. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. The support, again, is much appreciated. And a special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. Any questions or comments about the forecast, let me know in the comments section and below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And again, for those in the range of tropical cyclone or rainfall activity, there's no need to panic. This is typical weather for Australia. And again, it'd be concerning if any of this stuff wasn't happening. None of the weather that we have talked about in this forecast update has been especially severe for any parts of mainland Australia. That is all that I have time for today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.